I have a great card for you today. I have been holding off on this one. It's a card that, uh, it's an older design. Again, I, I'm all about bringing back some of the really cool old stuff. And um, I originally saw it about three years ago. Oh, I have to look it up for you. Um, but it, Karen Titus did it from Backboard Stampers, and I absolutely loved it. It is a great one for stash busting. And what I mean by that is using up all of those designer series papers that you've got hanging around for the year. Mm, so why now am I bringing this out? Because this is the last month for our annual catalog. Do, 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 for my Stampin' Up! fans. This is the last month. She's going away. If you follow me on my um, blog, I have uh, actually posted the items that are going to be going on clearance and the items that are going to be um, going away for for bye bye. So, why am I posting all that? Because and the other reason why we're using up all our papers is so we can buy some new ones. Look at this. I can't show you the inside yet. Got one more month to go, but it's exciting. New catalogs are always exciting. But um, there's there's some great things in there. Um, Stamina's changing a few things, which I don't know. I'm starting to wrap my head around it and really like it. So hopefully uh, you'll enjoy some of the changes that I'm going to be making to um, kind of reflect the catalog and, and how crafting in general is changing a little bit. Our lives seem to be getting busier and um, it's not that our time is short, but it's time and space are at a premium. So I think Stampin' Up! is addressing that. Anyway, we'll get into that later next month. Exciting stuff. This month in April is all about, or actually this is the last Friday of March, but um, April for me is going to be all about stash busting. So all of the things that we see are going to be using a lot of designer series papers, a lot of stamps that may be going away. So, you know, pull them out if you decide you want to get them. Check and see if they're on clearance so you don't miss out. So it's just going to be an opportunity for the whole month to kind of celebrate the end of the year and all the fun we've had and um, all the great paper. Because if you use all of the paper up, then you can order some more without guilt. Anyway, let's turn the camera down and get going. Okay, looks like we've got the camera set. I just realized I forgot to show you what we're doing. Um, these are pinwheel cards. It's very easy to make. Um, I went a little crazy making them. So we're going to do two today just to show you some, some differences. And I made some up so you can see that this is a, a really, um, well, as Karen says, it's just an all-occasion um, card to do. So let's get going with what we've got here. Um, as usual, I already, whoops, made a mess, already cut the card base. Now this one we're going to do a tall card base like this instead of a side opening here. So the card base sizes are all the same, but I'll repeat them for you anyway. If you are working on a um, metric cardstock, you want 21 centimeters by 14.85. If you are, oops, I'm just going to mess up the cardstock. Let's put that on the bottom. So if you are going to be using, um, <laughs> oh, excuse me, my allergies are terrible. Please, any sniffing or just try to ignore it. I really apologize. I actually am taking medication. It just, my 24 hour medication only makes it about eight hours. But anyway, you know, it is what it is, right? And it's spring, and I'd rather have the spring, even if it brings the allergies. Anyway, back to card making. So if you are working on imperial card stock, which is inches, using inches and feet, although we don't actually ever use feet in card making, but you know what I mean. You're going to have a piece that's eight and a half inches this way by five and a half this way. Now the score line is going to be halfway for metric. It'll be 10.5, and it'll be four, four and a half inches inches if you're working on Imperial. Okie dokie. We have a piece that we're going to use as a layer. And I also have a white piece. Oh, 
must have fallen out. I also cut a white piece for the card liner because this is a dark card. And this again is your, your pretty much standard size. You've got 10 centimeters this way by 14, four long. If you are working in, um, metric, uh, metric, I'm so sorry. If you're working in Imperial, you've got four inches. Yes, four inches by five and a quarter this way. All right. So now fun stuff. This is the greeting I made. I figured, you know, you guys can line up a couple of pieces of paper, stamp a greeting and, you know, drop some ribbon on it. So I'm not really going to demonstrate this for you. Um, but this is just another way to show you there's lots of different ways to put greetings and you know how you can take this basic piece use up some of your wonderful designer series papers and uh have, have some great cards it's kind of i don't like to use the word addictive but uh, once you make one you kind of your brain starts going and you want to make some more all right so we are starting with two squares of cardstock get my notes out here i don't want to tell you wrong okay here we go notes to the side if you are Working in metric as I am, you have 6.8 centimeters, and it's a square, 6.8 by 6.8. If you are joining me today and you're going to be working in imperial, you have 2 and 5 eighths by 2 and 5 eighths. Now, you've got some, uh, what do you call it, some latitude here. If you want a little more showing along the edge and you don't like working in 5 eighths, um, and I did, you know, I checked this out. Karen says you can do this as well in her video. Instead of going 2 and 5 eighths, you can just go ahead and do 2 and 3 quarters. It makes it a little bit longer. Um, or if you don't like working in eighths, if you would rather work in whole numbers, you can take this all the way out to 3 inches and you'll just have a larger border around the outside. You have to fudge a little putting the little pieces in there, but it, it'll go in. Once you see it, you'll see what I'm saying. Okay, if you um, are working in metric and you want a little more border, instead of going 6.8, you can go all the way out to um, 7 and make this at 7 centimeters. All right, so regardless, I'm going to be working small today. Um, yeah, the, the issue with doing the 7 centimeters, if you're working in metric, is the metric cards are slightly narrower, so you're going to have a lot less space when you go to, to put this on your card. So just be aware of that. I wouldn't really go to much more than 6.8 centimeters, but again, up to you. Now we're gonna glue these two pieces of cardstock together. What I have done here, is since I was making a bunch of them, I took, um, Karen talked about a trick. She didn't actually show you, so I thought, well, I'll just show it to you. Um, I like to work on graph paper, and what I have done is I figured out what half would be, which, um, if we're using 6.8, that'll be 3.5. And if you're using metric, you've got 5 eighths of an inch. And you sort of darken up your line so you've got a cross point. And you're working from here. So put this one in here. Take your bit of glue and pop it on here. Oop. There we go. And then this one is going to go... Uh, I was raised calling this caddy corner, um, diagonal, kitty corner, um, whatever you call it. Let me know, because I, I, I think it's really interesting that people around the world call it or sort of different things, but um, it always seems to have something to do with a cat in a corner. So anyway, there we go. Glue that down. Now, you can eyeball this. If you have a lot of confidence, go for it. I have, It's not that tough, but I liked being precise because when it... When you're laying these out, if you get too much drift, you're, you're going to shoot yourself because you're going to have to pull them back up. Now what I have here is the pile of fun stuff. This is your designer series paper. Uh, in this particular piece of paper, this one is, what is this? Love, oh, I got it written down over here. Um, most adored. Uh, this is one of the designer series papers from the um, uh, mini catalog, I think. Or was this a free one? I think this was mini catalog. Anyway, gorgeous paper. So I used two different ones. This, this, there's gold and red on one side, and this is gold hearts and pink on the other side. So we're going to use the, the red and pink today. So I'm using tape because we're going to be using tiny bits of tape. Oh, got tape all over everything. We're going to be using tiny bits of tape, and I think my tape runner's almost run out, so I may have to stop and fix it up but we'll get started. 
you take your first square you're only going to tape on one side I just just do tiny little tidbits of tape like this yeah you can tell my tape room is running out and what you're going to do is you're going to put this one down first leave just like a really thick hairs breadth all the way around so you can see the cardstock peeking out okay and we're going to go around a circle take your next piece put tape on the edge and we're going to take it like this this one's going to go on top and again we're taking our tiny little hair's breadth of red to show there now if you make this outside bit, bit bigger like i talked about in a minute ago you'll you can have more of your base color showing now you take your next one and we're really going around and around and around and you'll see why i'm only putting glue on one side when we get when we get to the end now line this one up now you should be lining up right here as well so if you're not quite sure if you have enough oh, sorry i can't see the red on the red is killing me there we go so this is lining up across here and lining up across there. If you get if you're a little bit picky like me, if you're not, you know what? The pattern and the papers makes it so it's really absolutely not noticeable. And I'll show you the blue one closely in a, in a few minutes and you'll see what I mean because the blue one I've got a drift a little bit and uh, it's just fine. You don't notice because of the paper. Because this is plaid, I am trying to be slightly more careful. Right, you see we're alternating going around hitting the points just with a little bit of half glue keep trying to hold this upright so you guys can see what i'm doing i'm getting too much hand in there all right next we've got a pink one yeah it's really great to use this that, that don't have um upright patterns even though this plaid is considered a directional pattern, it's not, um, in this case, it doesn't matter because we're going sideways. Or sideways are going catty corner. Diagonal. Or if you're a Harry Potter fan, it's diagonally. All right. Last piece. This is our toughy, but it's not really tough. One side. Now, what we need is it's going to have to go under this one. So I just stick the paper under here like that, pop it up, and now we're going to work it in here. Okay, work it in here. This is why you only do your part. I don't know if you can tell. I'm just sort of pushing on it to make sure it's going underneath and on top. There we go. And that is it. How much fun is that? And you've got to have something cool for the center of it. So I have some four-pack tinsel gems here. And I am using this. I'm not exactly sure which. Oh, gosh. I <laughs> keep doing that. I'm not exactly sure which color this is. It's the pink one out of here, but I think it might be flamingo. I don't think it's baby pink, but it doesn't matter because look how good it looks. Or you could use red. You could use any color there you want. I just kind of tested the pink one in advance and really liked it. And so that is the basic pinwheel finish. So let's finish up the card real quick and I'll show you what I have done. Let's see, I'm just going to use glue here. Someone asked me a very good question. Is why do I use tape and glue? And here's the answer. I really love using the tape. I just really do. It's easy. It's fast. It sticks. It doesn't slide. You rarely have glue, what I call glue spooges. However, it is about triple the price of this and since i make so many cards and this works just as well i use the glue and as you know when i'm sticking inside i will often use tape on things that are backed with white 
because the glue can leave like a glue shadow. Now, you know me in dimensionals? We gotta pop them up, baby. So let's put these on here. Um, the first one I made, the blue one, I went a little crazy with dimensionals and then realized you don't have to do that. I had a dimensional on every single point and it was a bit um it was a bit much. So basically you only need four to make it really pop up. And you don't really need one in the center. Oh dear, what'd I do? Oh, that's what I did. <laughs> Ugh, come on, Lori. Is that gonna No, he's going to stay there. Well, that's all right. He can stay. Oh, dear. Scribing personality to Ah, oh, stamping dimensionals. I think I am losing it. And I'm going to put this up on dimensionals as well. And I have to admit, this is the very last tiny piece of red ribbon I had left. I used every bit of that package of red and green ribbon for Christmas. So it's like, well, you know, save your scraps because you never know. And darn it, if this didn't work out just perfect for this. All right, let's use our pointy bit here and take some take some of these off. Now you can put this on here um, two different whoops already took them off two different ways. I'm going to show you that. Whoops. We can put this either on here straight up and down like. Hey, come on, get in the middle like that. Or you can go cattywampus like this. I think since we have so many straight lines, I'm going to do this one a little bit cattywampus like that. And let's make sure. And we will put our greeting right here. All right, how easy was that? And then, of course, if you do have a card liner, you can stamp it with something awesome. And um, this one is ready to rock. Now, I did tell you I would show you up close. This blue one, you can see it. my, my pieces went adrift a little bit. But I really honestly believe um, if I hadn't pointed that out to you, you probably wouldn't have noticed. There's just bits showing. So they're picking up the blue from the card base. So if you do, if, if your pieces do run adrift a little bit, you're not, you're not perfectly set in a straight line, then you're fine. Um, on this one, I had one piece that's actually, it, it's too big. I was not careful in my cutting. That one's too big. That one's too small. But you know what? I think if I had pointed that out to you, you probably wouldn't see it. So I thought, let's do one more. It goes so fast. And um, I love these colors. So we're going to do these colors. Let's put this aside. And I'll just show you one more time since it's easy and it's fun. And I really think you guys will be making several of these. This would make a cute card set. So if you were doing a stationary set for someone, you could just put, you know, different greetings. Because this would go well for happy birthday greeting. Just a note greeting, congratulations, hi, how are you? Um, you could even do a sympathy card with this. Okay. Oh, and you always know you cut it wrong. If you um, take a second and draw your lines here, if you wind up cutting it wrong, you find out really quickly. Okay. Then are done. Let's stick them down. Um, I used on pretty much all of these. I used a dark paper and a light paper. I found that I liked that the best. The one, this one. See how it's the contrast is not very strong. You don't get, you don't get that hard pinwheel feel. Although this is a look in itself because it's a softer. But versus the ones where I used a brighter, a dark dark and a, and a light dark. No, a dark and a light piece. So anyway, something to think about when you're putting these patterns together and when you're going through and looking at your stash to see what will work. 
I happen to pull papers out of the same uh, stash here, but you know, you don't have to. Just know that if you if you feel like you have problems uh, matching things up, that is really one of the gorgeous things about stamping up papers and designer series papers and ribbons and ink and all of our products go together absolutely beautifully. So you don't ever have to worry your, your colors are off or you don't quite have it right. Yep, see, because I'm running out of tape here, so it's getting... It doesn't want to turn when it gets down to the end like this. Oh, look, wee. I like that one. Now, I don't know if you can see, I'm just using... Just barely having a little bit show. Um, let make that one. See, that one might be cut just a shade big. But we'll see. Like I said, if you start running a drift, you can tell pretty much. And, you know, nobody is perfect. We can do our best and try to cut these pieces perfectly. But the truth is, uh, we're human. And even though I like working in Metro because it is incredibly precise, it um, it goes it goes astray as well. There you go. Oh, are you loving the way this is turning out? This is Calypso Coral, and this is the simply no softly stippled softly stippled. Designer series paper. This was a freebie. If you um, ordered from the catalog, ah. during celebration. Sorry, finish the sentence or finish the tape, one or the other. Okay, Lori. Now remember this. We're going to pull this one up like that. Ask it to sit on top this and we're going to fit this corner in. Come on. You can do it. Oh, see this one wants me to stick it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. I guess that's a little fiddly but worth it I think. See how this one's going to drift. Yeah, he doesn't want to be in there. Yep, this one's going to be one of the ones that's not going to line up perfect, but that's good. I'm, I'm glad I did it on camera so you can see. Not all of them are going to be absolute perfection. Okay, there we go. And if it bothers you when these pieces are sticking up, it's simple just to take your tape, pull up the edges, take your tape, and stick it down. It's quite easy. pa -da -da! What do you think? Aren't those gorgeous colors? Now this one, um, this these dots came with the Thoughtful Suite, I think. And I haven't used them. But they are in the new catalog, so that's kind of exciting, too. They do not have glue on them. These are great to use for things like shaker cards, which is one of the reasons I got them. I want to try some shaker cards again. I've done one, and I think they're fun, so. All right. <sighs> Tweezers. Because I have the world's driest fingers, and I can't pick one thing up. Now I'm putting that down on the glue dot. Now we're going to see if we can, probably should put the glue down first. I know, we can hear my friend Lauren out, told you so. There we go. But I thought the champagne color 
would be a really good nod to the the wild wheat that's inside but it's also it's it's not wild wheat colored so it is a champagne color so there we go that was fun. i'm glad i got to use these and as you saw on the others um this one is a piece of white paper and i did a, a background on it. This is part of the 3D embossing folder set, the basic set, the one that's sort of a linen weave looking. So I ran that through the embosser. I stamped it first and then ran it through the embosser. Um, this one has a plain background. This one has a piece of designer series paper for the background as we are going to do this. This is one of the backgrounds in this paper, this really gorgeous, um, I would call it burlap, but it it has all different all different kind of names but it just seems much nicer than an actual burlap so that's my bone folder there we go so let's give this some glue put this on here I like these papers that are what I call prints of photographs because that looks that looks it's so real looking and it's a photograph. All right, I have done a die cut to put on here. Thank you, die cut. This is from I keep I don't think I kept it out. Um I'll note what it is in the website so you can see. But um I used a little bit of um uh coral ink. Calypso Coral, and I ran it over the the um, embossing folder, and then I put the die cut. The, the die actually fits in the embossing folder. It's what's called a hybrid. And then you run it through, and you get the cutout words. And the bit of ink just sort of makes it, makes it show up a little bit better, I think. All right, and again, we need some dimension. I think this pack is about done. Oh, nope, there's some more. Got another. Got one. Don't know if you guys can hear that pounding. My uh, neighbor's doing some remodeling. <sighs> At least he doesn't go too early in the morning or late at night, so. There we go. So what do you think? Should we put this one straight up and down? Let's try that. See what I was talking about? How that just does fit in here. Pull it this way just a little bit. There we go. Okay, that keeps wanting to come up. So just take your tape put a little bit of tape underneath it and just pop it down if you've got one that's cheeky like that and let's put a couple of dimensionals here get rid of these any of you crafters find these little things all over your house do the best parts when they get stuck to the cat all right okay there we go that's our last one i hope you guys have enjoyed this i hope you give this a try it's such a great thing to do just playing with little strips of paper playing with colors it's a great stash buster. So here we go. We'll put our guys out here that we have made. And these are the ones I made before. And here's just some different ideas on how you can finish these cards. All right. Thank you very much. I hope you have enjoyed this. If you're watching on replay, I always appreciate a thumbs up. And uh, 
Oh, that's fun. It's coming off. And um, follow me if you're interested in finding out some more. Also, as I said, uh, on my website, I will place a link to Karen's video where um, she and her husband, Tim, go through. And they are so cute. Guys, you should watch them. Um, and uh, go through and see uh, see that. I'm going to put this on... Um, if you're watching on YouTube, I think I will actually put their link in the bottom in the description as well. All right. Have a fabulous day, folks. Happy crafting. See you soon.